I'm just going to quickly show the components of the giant icosahedron I just made. That's in the previous YouTube. Now basically this is all of them. This is two 12 rings joined like that. 12. This 10 ring. This one is two nine rings, and one of them, it's got to be the right one, so you, if you do the bottom one it won't work, so you've got, to get, you've got to figure out which one's the right one and then do them all the same, they're all the same. You need uh, 12 of them, oh, a lot of those, I can't remember, and but more heaps and heaps. It's not just 20. It's like a lot more than 20. And you need 12 of these. And that's all you need. You don't know how to make the little star. You start with a five ring. And you put it, oh, put it the right way around. You put it on. Use a long line and that keeps the direction of the magnetic field pointing you know, along the circumference of the the five ring in the same way as the magnets that are in the five ring and that way you end up with one of them and the magnetic field goes around that way and the magnetic field of the actual individual magnet goes along the same direction if it turns around and then the whole thing starts distorting it's no good now ultimately these oops these two go together like that but not first you do that once it's assembled All right. because it's just too hard as soon as you click anything onto that it'll collapse all, right. all you do is you take all of these you find the right way I happen to put it on the right way first I could have got it wrong I could have put it that way and that would be wrong okay you find the right way which is like that you put it on and that's good it's like a fish and then you make more six rings you put them all around or every now and again you put the five ring on and the five ring goes like that and then when you get all of them on you put the the um the ten ring on top of the five ring and the ten ring goes Oh, I've made it upside down, haven't I? After telling you to get it right. Okay, change direction. And in the right places, you put the 10 rings like that. They just clip together, that's the inside. And that's not a triangle, that's a loop. And that's the outside, and that is the triangle. Right, and you just keep doing it all around. All right. Now this particular one, it would work if you just used no, none of these and 12 of the loops. That would be a good place to start if, you, if you're not confident you can do it. Or you could use 12 of these and 20 of the 12 rings, the double 12 rings. Or I can't count how many I used because I did more than, more than two rows. But I'll show you the general progression. Um, if you just use, oh, sorry, I'm adjusting my thing here. If you just use 12 um, dodecahedron, uh, 12 pentagons, you'll end up with a, a dodecahedron. That could be five in a ring or ten in a ring. And you could, in the in the corners here, you could insert one of these one of those triangles and then you would have 20 of them I think something like that additionally you could instead of making a dodecahedron you can make a soccer ball a soccer ball has a five a pentagon in the middle and around each pentagon is six of these and then in between each each of the pentagons is 
oh, I appear to have drawn them wrong anyway, but, uh, yeah, 5, 6, 5, every direction is like that. Yeah, I've drawn that, this should be 5s and that should be a 6. Sorry about that. But anyway, you put the 6s in. If you keep doing that, you end up, you can add extra 6s, more and more 6s, this is roughly what I did. Um, I know that's a hideously complex looking thing, but basically you've got five sixes around it, and in between each of the corners here, you put one of those little triangly things. The magnetic field on all the fives and all the sixes goes one way, and the magnetic field on all the triangles goes the other way. And that's all you have to do.